Welcome one, welcome all. Now believe it or not, it's been 12 years since the legend that is John Carmack unleashed Doom 3 onto us with its enhanced bump mapping, see normal mapping, and its core unified lighting and shadowing delivering its technological leap of full real-time lighting when released on PC in 2004 and later the Xbox 360. Now this enabled the sombre fearful lighting that the game is famous for, bright electrical lighting and self-shadowing all enabled through the game's claustrophobic corridors and pioneering shadow volumes or stencil shadows with Carmack's own reverse algorithm. It was a controversial release when announced as many did not want to reboot the 90s original, something it was very far removed from, but in the end it was thrust upon us, and crap ourselves we most surely did. But times have changed, maybe not that much. As in 2006, we have a new Doom, itself a reboot of the reboot, but now reverting to earlier or simpler naming tags. Id Tech remains but has jumped two versions from 4 to its latest iteration in 6, but the brown pants remain. This means that across all formats and modes, the game targets the same 1080 60, and this means PS4, Xbox One and PC all have the choice of that target. And on all, it could go lower, and depending on your PC spec, also north of that. With only the consoles running the dynamic resolution scaling mind, but I will confirm if the PC is having an option when I get my hands on. With the latest demo on the new Nvidia 1080 card using the shortly after launch Vulkan supported API, hitting 200 FPS at times. 60 is enough for now and the ceiling we hit on this PS4 release I am examining, just ahead of its Friday release. After I looked at the beta of the multiplayer on both consoles last month, many may have detected my disappointment at what the multiplayer demonstrated and it lacked the feeling of a Doom game. All that is irrelevant as we now get to the meat of the matter. Single player is admittedly my big draw with it trying to recapture the mixture of fast high octane action and demonic horror of the first games and less the horror survival of 3. And it is set on Mars with as they say badass demons, guns and most importantly the BFG returns. I mean that name and that heritage is real but does the game stay true to its maze like original and its secret doors? First up, the game tells its story of hell on earth throughout the game's comm system recording and such, keeping cinematics to a minimum after the short start and area entering sections, etc. The premise is the same hell on earth, well Mars, as you are awoken mid-sacrifice, space marine armed and ready to take on wave after wave of demons spawned within the embedded base or open areas. No ghost on this surface but you do need to get your ass off of it, or at least through it, to find the answers. This is no cover based shooter with tactics all relying on your fast and precise target and movement. It promotes and requires you to not stand still, strafe, dodge, jump and blast your way to victory. Glory kills are open once the enemy is weak enough shown by a glowing red or blue and this is needed as when done they drop more health to keep you in the fight. If you hate you can turn off the animation in these menus as well. Playing on the hardest setting available from the start, ultra violent, it is actually not that tough but after an hour or so into the game, or maybe two, it ramps up the enemy's accuracy and it becomes a challenge. Even though you start with a simple handgun as you progress, you can bolster your arsenal with all weapons being OSP from the hands of fallen warriors and they get progressively more powerful and impressive as you go, helping you cut through the undead army. Now even though the action is more offensive than defensive, it still creates a tense and foreboding dread as you venture into the dark steam filled tunnels and vents, helped by the demonic gargling and screeching. The game for a console release again is yet another showing the trend changes and welcome ones offering more choice for the player. As we have seen in The Division and Neo and now here you can adjust the settings in the game. Chromatic aberration on and off, motion blur from high, medium, low and off and more impressively is the field of view slider giving you the standard 90 degree view of most console first person shooters up to full GoPro 110 mode which opens up the frustrum with the fisheye lens giving you more space and even makes the game's pace feel even faster. It is my preferred view here, but the main thing is, the choice is yours to go pro.
I really commend this from the team and long may it continue. Not full visual tweaks like PC, but these simpler and less convoluted choices are most welcome. I will cover the impact all these settings have, if any, once I have all versions at my disposal, but from some early tests here, the motion blur from full to off does not make a noticeable difference from these early tests, but I will cover in detail in my next video. For now, we will look at the current performance levels and metrics the PS4 release has. For clarity, this is running the day one patch, which is 5.7 gigabytes, bringing it up to version 1.02. So as per the earlier test, we are seeing a native 1920-1080 output on the PS4 here most of the time from these early sections, and the 16 millisecond frame times are also hit regularly as we commence our descent into hell, giving us a smooth 60 hertz update that are stable mates of the engine and series. Visually, it is a very good looking game and from my early sections I have been impressed by many features evident in the new engine, aided with ex Crytek Wiz Tiago Souza, now head of graphics R&D at ID. He brings across a considerable level of knowledge and talent that is immediately evident once the game starts up. Even targeting the frugal 60Hz rate, it is a visually impressive game on many levels and image quality and construction is one of its highest. Combining its temporal super sampled AA within its gorgeous motion blur post effects pass, it creates an incredibly clean and noise free display and with the per object motion blur sampling velocity direction and more, they work in harmony to deliver what is high on my list of IQ standouts in current games. Not unsurprising from the man that brought all the Crisis games and Rise. Now best appreciated in the real time script scenes or better still the glory kills, ah, the glory for those that are about to die. We salute you. Anyway. In play, all areas are well concealed from specular highlights, edges of geometry and texture work from its PBR based assets. It may have an MSAA element also combined within its expansive AA solution and it is a success, helped more with its temporal rate improvements. As this is possibly the best HAL has and will ever look, and the engine serves up far more than just horrific creatures. Post effects are not spared here, with bokeh depth of field, chromatic aberration, volumetric lighting and smoke, and more, but I will cover that in detail with my head to head, along with its anti aliasing and IQ that will be up shortly. For now, we concentrate on the game's initial hook, layout, and performance, which you can see from my frame time graph and rates on screen. This may be a new and improved id tech engine, but the frame consistency has not changed, and it is a very solid title throughout my early tests, and the PS4, and I'm sure other versions will all fall in line. It is not a lock 60, but fear not console players, as it rarely feels anything less than that, and so far in some big battles, the lowest dips I get are 54, but more importantly, the majority of areas and combat is 99% of the time at the 16 milliseconds refresh rate, and completely tear free. The biggest dips are, again, section loading, saving points, seeing our highest catch, but these are not only very common in all games, they do not hinder you in any way. In the combat sections, as the dips are fleeting and never higher than a single 33 millisecond spike at a time, you would be as hard pushed to notice them as you would the dynamic resolution scaling. It may play and feel like an old school shooter with its core design, fast and enjoyable action, but it looks anything but a modern state of the art engine and a mightily impressive one at that. Helped by a decent choice of control, game and visual options, you can tailor play to your liking and whatever you choose. It will sure be a bloodbath. Now you can enjoy a few more minutes of action until I return with a detailed look at the game across platforms and of course the final multiplayer side and the game's map editor which expands on the choice. If you don't like the maps in the game then simply create your own and share with the community. And as always I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this, if you did then please hit the like and subscribe button, if you didn't hit your dislike and tell me what you didn't like. Leave all your thoughts and feedback below, are you also looking forward to Doom? Is there something else you want to play or is this leaving you cold and dead inside? Anyway, you guys and girls take care and I'll see you very soon on the next one.